God, it's so great to have you back. Welcome to Talks with Todd the Lender once again. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good. Hanging in there. Um, so I actually wanted to shift our conversation a little bit today. So um, we talked about the beginning stages of establishing a mortgage, going through the application process, and then also right now what's relevant are forbearances if you already have a mortgage established. So I kind of wanted to shift to a not so warm and fuzzy feeling, um, but I wanted to talk about what it means to be in foreclosure. So firstly, Todd, can you explain what is a foreclosure and why or how could someone be foreclosed? on their home sure there's there's a few different things to think about with a foreclosure so obviously first and foremost is if your mortgage is made on time you're current you can also look at doing if you're getting late or behind you can look at doing a short sell um, if you're upside down on your property not a whole lot of that right now but there's there's a few instances where that may be something that comes into play a foreclosure occurs when you're late I believe it's 150 days and beyond so in the state of California with most big investors because they're all so busy it's about eight months for that notice of default to be actually sent over to the to uh, be recorded once a notice of default is issued basically the bank can do whatever they want to to get their investment back and most time they take your home and they sell your home Okay. And so thank you for explaining that just to get us like started on this. So one thing I'm asked all the time by my first time home buyers, and I know I've shared this with you before, they'll go on Zillow, for example, and on Zillow, it will allow you when you're browsing as a prospective buyer to see pre foreclosures um, that are, you know, available or not available, but you know, being listed. And all the time, my clients will send me an address, hey, we want to see this house. And I'm on the MLS and I'm looking it up and it doesn't exist. So I say, send me the link where you found it. And yes, it does say pre foreclosure on Zillow. So in that situation, I, I tend to give them a little bit of education on what it is and what how it would affect them and how they're not really eligible um, to purchase that property. So could you go into your side of it, how you explain what a pre foreclosure is and how and why someone would not be eligible to purchasing that? Yeah, a house can be in pre foreclosure for a couple of different reasons. Either the paperwork is in the process of being submitted by the bank to take that to full foreclosure, or they're working with the home buyer to keep them out of foreclosure. So, or the homeowner. Now, the reason a home buyer wouldn't be able to look at that is, is because the homeowner still owns the home. I mean, it's still their home, and until it's being foreclosed on, there's really nothing that anybody can do. Now, the thing with a foreclosure, there's a couple of different steps that are taken. And the first step is, is, is the bank will try and sell their home. You, you've heard, you may have heard it before on the courthouse steps. They'll try and sell that home at whatever value they feel the valuation is set at. And they, and they do um, what's called a BPO. It's a, it's a bank appraisal basically to determine that. And if they can't get their value that they're looking for, you know, cash on the courthouse steps, then they'll find an agent to represent the bank and then they'll put that up for sale and then they'll sell it for whatever the market dictates is it is worth. Um, so you really, a pre foreclosure, you can't do anything until the client either decides to sell it on their own or until the bank finishes the foreclosure and they take the home and then they sell it. Okay, and jumping back a little bit to what you just mentioned, so there's the BPO, which as you mentioned, is kind of like the bank's version of an appraisal. Mm -hmm. So if you are purchasing a foreclosure, is it a traditional transaction where you have a lender, you're, you're being funded, you go through an appraisal process and it looks the same? Yes, yeah, nothing is different um, from the buyer's perspective. Just on the seller side, you're dealing with the bank instead of the actual homeowner. Um, the bank has to approve you know, the offer, they have to make sure that it falls in line with what they're looking for um, financially on their side. And whatever happens if there's a discrepancy between the purchase price being offered and the appraisal on a foreclosed transaction? As far as, far as which like appraisal? If the, like if there's a purchase price being offered on a foreclosed home, or mm -hmm. for home being foreclosed on, and it, would there ever be a discrepancy in the purchase price and the appraisal, or do they work it out where whatever the buyer is bringing to the table is what the bank has decided the value is? 
you know, the banks try and play tough and they, they try and say that, you know, what we listed at is what we're going to sell it at. If it comes in low, you have to pay the difference. We're not paying closing costs. We're not, you know, all of these things. At the end of the day, if an appraisal comes in low, the bank understands that it, it's low. I mean, it, it their valuation was incorrect. Um, so they'll renegotiate that contract. They'll normally drop the price of their home and, and, and meet that so that they can finish the transaction. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. So basically, to be a buyer that would be viable for a foreclosure, you have to be prepared to basically ask for nothing from the seller in closing costs. Most likely, no repairs will be done either. It'll be sold as is. Is that true? Again, the banks try and play hardball, but I've seen them to where they they do. They'll they'll pay like I know Fannie Mae when they're writing their contracts, it says right on there three percent. That's it. Well. 3% is all we need. So, you know, it doesn't, that, that's a, that's great. It's kind of a no haggle type of a situation. As far as repairs, that's where the repairs get kind of tough. Um, they don't like FHA loans cause they don't want to deal with repairs, but it, you know, today's day and age, we all know that repairs have to be done on a conventional loan, just like they have to be done on an FHA loan. If the appraiser calls it out. It's going to have to be completed. So normally they can work that out as well it's honestly, it's, it's a headache for you as an agent more than it's a headache for, for anybody else. Cause you're the one that has to go back and forth with the bank on that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. That makes sense. So yeah, I just wanted to touch base and go into this a little bit. I'm really hopeful that it's not going to impact our market in the near future where we're going to see a lot of these. I know based on our conversations with forbearances, it was something that we were preparing ourselves for. If there wasn't going to be a lot of leniency from the feds and investors potentially accepting these, um, you know, parameters for these forbearances for people that are needing to take advantage of that offer. So I'm really hopeful it's not going to impact our market, but foreclosures do happen. They are out there. A lot of my first time home buyers ask me questions about this and they want to see if they can purchase a foreclosure. So just kind of preparing them with the right information and letting them know how the transaction will look. Its identity is a little bit different than a traditional. Typically, what do you see as far as the timeline for short sales going from start to finish to, to contract open to close date? It really depends on the bank that you're dealing with. Um, if they've got a savvy asset manager, it can go, you know, maybe 60 days instead of a, a normal 30 um, most of the time you're looking at 90, 120 days there. It's a pretty long process. Uh, that's why you'll hear a lot of people say, if you can stay away from a short sell, stay away from a short sell, they're, they're kind of a headache. Um, but there's, there's companies out there that handle short sales and help with that paperwork and get things moving a little bit quicker now. Um, after the last go around in uh, 2010 and, and beyond. So there's a lot to be said for, what the market would have to do to get to that point. The great thing is, is we did see the forbearance levels kind of taper off. So I think they went from like 8.53% to 8.56% of mortgages were in forbearance. So we've pretty much leveled off. People aren't, aren't getting forbearances at this point. Um, the stock market's up from, you know, roughly 18,000 up to 25,000 right now. So it's on its way back up. So things are looking good. Interest rates are fantastic. Um, there's still a lot of equity in the properties out there. So hopefully the short sales, you know, won't be too prevalent in our market. Um, foreclosures is something that if somebody lost their job, you could see some foreclosures um, hit the market in, uh, you know, in the next six months. Perfect. Thank you so much for that explanation. I'm so glad that we're able to um, get all this information out there and whether someone's looking to buy or sell or someone is potentially going to foreclosure or in it. Um, I just, I love having the education and the information that we can share with our clients and our public. So thank you once again, Todd, do you have any closing remarks for us today? Um, yeah, just you, for anybody out there that's looking to, to purchase a home um, with regards to what you had mentioned about Zillow, definitely get a hold of Victoria. She can get you on a system that's a lot more accurate and it's going to weed out those pre-foreclosures that you can't really shop for.
Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I will receive an address from a client and I'm trying to pull it up on the MLS that I have a client portal site I'm happy to share, which I always do. Um, but I know people are always pulled back to Zillow and to those portals. So at least let me fact check it before you fall in love with something for sure, because they're not absolutely. always accurate and they're going to show you things that might not be tangible. So thank you for that. Um, that little 10 cents. I agree 100%. <laughs> yes. If you're on Zillow, call me first. You never know if it's accurate over there. And I have the MLS client portal. I can happily share. Awesome. Thank you so much, Todd, for your time today. I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you next week and update us on anything that's going on with forbearances as well. Absolutely. I look forward to it. Thanks, Todd. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.